Hello and welcome back to another episode. Today I want to share with you a little bit of the reason why I truly love Dead Rising. Uh, this game was uh, possibly a launch title, uh, certainly a very early title released on the Xbox 360. And it was one of the games which I was most excited about when it first came out. Partly because, uh, I don't know, it's made by Capcom and they obviously have a certain pedigree when it comes to zombie games, uh, especially for example Resident Evil, um, but also partly because actually of the technical specifications. There was a big, a big deal was made about this game and it's, uh, it's, it's on-screen, uh, yeah, the on-screen mass of zombies, uh, the horde and the sheer number of, of uh, essentially polygons on, on screen at one time. Um, and of course there's the fun element. So here we have Frank, the hero, and he is uh, currently wearing uh, some sort of snazzy <laughs> fashionable gear from a shop <clears throat> in the mall and also he's wearing a Mega Man uh, helmet just because well uh, why not let's see, if, let's see if I can get a close up there you go Mega Man helmet how cool is that uh, the reason I love this game is quite simply that it is uh, at its best a free-for-all you can uh, approach uh, the task of killing zombies any way that you want, um, so long as you you know you don't get yourself killed. Uh, I love that it is a shopping mall. It reminds me very much of uh, there's a mall near us called the Metro Centre, which is I believe Europe's largest shopping mall, and uh, and also of course this is definitely inspired by Dawn of the Dead, the uh, the Romero uh, classic, and so it, the fact that it, it mixes all this stuff together means that this was this was this was uh, what's the word it was uh, an inevitable choice it was irresistible to me in terms of a, a gameplay uh, option now i love that, that for example you can do things like this you can put uh, heads uh, uh, you know play play heads on zombies i believe that's a character from uh, mega man might be wrong there um, <clears throat> The fact that you can, for, oh, for example, use baseball bats, you can, let's see, go into the record store, can I pick up uh, some CDs? Yeah, let's do that. And let's uh, throw some CDs at, at some unsuspecting zombie. There we go, yes, in the face. And uh, <laughs> I have to say, the number of times I've played this opening, this is, this is very close to the beginning of the game, this opening uh, mall section is... Uh, it probably, I can't probably probably couldn't count it easily. Uh, I'm up to, up to level 43, as you can tell. So I've played through certainly the opening section several times. And the great thing is, every time you you, you gain um, you gain experience in this game, you keep it on your next playthrough. The bad thing about the game, though, is the time limit. You'll see there that the, uh, I've currently engaged in a mission called Backup for Brad, and uh, and you you have this watch which. Um, Oh, hello Kent. Oh, not Kent. I hate Kent. Uh, he's a rival photographer. This watch, which you have to stick to. You have a three-day limit, uh, or three-day of in-game uh, time at least, limit, uh, to, to get the story played. And this that's the downside to Dead Rising, and also actually to be honest, Dead Rising 2, is the fact that actually the structure, I think, in some ways gets in, way, gets in the way of the fun possibilities of the gameplay. Um, this is one of the reasons why actually I recently uh, purchased Dead Rising 2 off the record, because in there that you have a, a um, oh bollocks, you have a um, uh, essentially a sandbox mode where there is no time limit. You can just experiment, you can uh, explore, you can find all the secrets. For example, uh, in here there should be a bowling ball. Let's see, where's the bowling ball? There we go. Um, and I've very much, very much been enjoying that ability to actually have a sandbox mode um, because that's something that I wanted from this game. I don't want to have to go and rescue so and so otherwise I've basically buggered up the story and then for the rest of those three allotted days you, you are just wandering around aimlessly but it feels decidedly aimless. Uh, at least in the sandbox mode of, um, of uh, Dead Rising 2 off the record Hey, electric guitar. You can um, you can basically do challenges. You can build up uh, points. You can actually gain uh, expertise. You know, power uh, prestige points they're called. In this game, you gain them for taking photos. So, for example, there's a photo which I gained 33 PP for. Um, but in the uh, the sandbox mode in off the record, 
you gain it for uh, you know doing challenges like kill a thousand zombies within you know within 30 seconds this kind of thing uh, obviously not probably not a thousand zombies but you know but you know what i mean it's fun and um that's that's the that's the element of this game which I love the best is is when you are doing the sandbox thing. So, for example, let's go in into this shop. Let's see, can I find a acoustic guitar this time? And let's see, there we go. Aha! Now, I particularly love, as I say, the the number of zombies on screen, and um, oh. Taking photos. Ah, oh, what's his chops? Is going to try. Kent's trying to going to try and give me a photo uh, tutorial. I can't be bothered with that stuff. Um, <clears throat> certainly not on this video. Uh, yeah, but so yeah, so yes, is the, the number of zombies on screen? And um, uh, for example, out in the the middle of the mall here, in the sort of the car, the uh, the park, there is. Let's see. Can I find? Oh, it's all the way over there, isn't it? Okay, off we go. Basically, I'm looking for a lawnmower because that is a ton of fun. Come on! <laughs> um, but yeah, can you, if you can you imagine? I mean, when I first when I first got to play this game, um, when I first essentially was was getting to know the Xbox 360, uh, this was this was astonishing in terms of the the technological achievement, uh, in terms of the that sense of the open world and also actually as I say I really liked the way that the Capcom were drawing on their their zombie pedigree to bring bring us an experience which is is primarily about fun yes there, there is a storyline yes there are psychos psychopaths in this game who you have to try and take out uh, basically uh, humans who have just gone crazy in the zombie apocalypse um, like you know people who run shops this kind of thing there's a lawnmower um, yeah, there are there are sort of sort of serious elements to it, but the fact that you can dress up as, you know, put on Mega Man's helmet and uh, go to town uh, is precisely the point. So here, this is yes, that's what I'm getting at. Lawnmower, that. So can I go over here? Yeah. This is all I ever wanted to do in this game, basically. Um, would be a, a zombie mass murderer. <laughs> but also find creative ways to uh, to kill the zombies. And I love the fact that the game gives you the tools, you know? Yes, at times it makes slightly crude suggestions, like there, having a lawnmower next to a whole load of zombies who are crowded outside a door that you have to try and get through to get the game uh, progressing, or the story progressing. But I can live with that, you know. I mean, this is very early on, as I say, in the game, and so maybe maybe some suggestions are necessary. Look at the number of zombies on screen. Isn't that impressive? Love it. Um, I really like actually also the uh, in the follow-on to this game in Dead Rising 2, um, the uh, the combination weapons that you can do. So, for example, you can take a sledgehammer like that and put on the end of it a chainsaw. Um, and this is something which they brought into Dead Rising 2 in, in a very creative way because the main character was essentially an engineer. Um, this is something which they kept for Dead Rising 2 off the record. And um, when you're playing as Frank in that, he keeps those skills. So Frank here, the photojournalist, is a bit of an everyman. He's a little bit, you know, he's not he's not super healthy. He's a little bit overweight. Um, and uh, actually in Dead Rising 2, he's definitely... You know, he's he possibly past his prime, um, but actually in the sandbox mode, uh, it's literally, um, he's on, you know, this, this is him on vacation, he's just having fun, because they know that's what you want to do, in terms of just mucking about with the possibilities of uh, of this game. Yes. Um, there's an underground section in this game, which is sort of a, I suppose, a service ducts, parking lot type area where it's just crammed with zombies. And actually you can, um, for example, go, go and find vehicles. Actually, let's see, can I find the vehicle over here? And, uh, and bring those into the mix. Oh, there's a teddy bear. Can I get this? Use the teddy bear. <laughs> Doesn't really do anything. Let's see if I can run with the teddy bear. Come on, let's play bear. You can, you, can, you can go and find vehicles and bring those into the mix as well. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, you know, as a guy who loves uh, the zombie genre, loves 
for example, Dawn of the Dead um, loves uh, Resident Evil. Certainly, the, uh, the the shape that Resident Evil was, you know, with the first games up to I don't know Resident Evil Five, for example. Uh, this is a, a breath of not so much fresh air, but something different, you know. Um, let's see. Should we get in the car? Let's get in the car. There we go. Okay. Hit them. There we go. And I love the point, I love the fact that they have spawned a whole load of zombies just for you to. Uh, oh no. Just for you to. Oh, can I not reverse? There we go. Just for you to to run over there. They weren't there when we ran in. But again, the game knows. It knows what you want. It knows what you're doing and why you're doing it. Um. And at its best, that's what Dead Rising is. It is a uh, very silly, very fun experience. At its worst, you can see that radio uh, turning up at the bottom there. If I t press right, Otis talks to you and gives you essentially little side quests. He says, you know, I've spotted a, uh, for example here, yeah, uh, somebody's barricaded in a women's clothes shop. Go and, yeah, go and find them essentially fetch quests and escort missions and sadly the escort uh, missions in this game just aren't enjoyable because the the frankly the um the ai for those people that you're trying to rescue isn't very good you know they get stuck on on uh, scenery they get themselves into far more trouble than they really should do if they were if they were remotely conscious um and uh, and so I don't particularly enjoy those either, and so I sort of have a bit of a, a, a bit of a love-hate relationship with elements, certainly of this game. Um, oh, get off! There we go. Uh, with elements of this game, and I'm, I'm happy to see that they have addressed that. In see, look, he, he won't stop calling me. What? Yeah, yeah, I'm in North Plaza. Go away. Um, that they've addressed that in later later instalments in the series which is good um i'm looking forward to seeing where they go with with uh, with the series and also actually by the way let me just pause it for a second the other day i picked up this um uh, dead rising watchtower which is a, a movie which actually should go into the d section in our dvd library um obviously <laughs> and actually it's not too bad it's it it's like a made for tv extended sort of feature length episode of something but uh, if you're a fan of the game, they really there's lots of fan service built into it, uh, and I, I appreciate that. Um, it's, again, it's very silly. There is the combination weapons that turn up in the movie, and um, and our hero is a, a bit of a generic everyman. Oh, hunting knife! Hello, there we go. Now you may be wondering why I'm going through this section, and the reason why I'm going through here is to get to. If I can find it. This. Let's see, in here, isn't there a, a knife, people? Get out the way. There we go, bugger off. Right. Where's the... Is the... Ah! Cleaver. Oh, okay. Hunting knife. Uh, hunting knife. What I'm after is, I think it's in here. Katana. That's what I'm after. Yes! <laughs> Damn right. So this this is it. This is this is this moment here is the reason why I love this game. It just brings a smile to your face. It is in so many ways. You know, you know how like there are people out there who, who crave a zombie apocalypse because it'll mean they get to be a survivalist and all that kind of thing. Um Oh, in this, in the shopping mall there, in the uh, food and stuff, there's a, there's a psycho. I'm going to avoid that just for now. Um, yeah, the people who sort of crave that survivalist element. Well, there are also people who sort of crave that, um, that fun element of essentially being able to commit murder in a, in a very, <laughs> very creative way because it's, you know, it's the, it's the classic sort of, you know, Nazis, zombies. Yeah, it doesn't really matter what you do to these people. And the, a, a very dark part of me deeply enjoys being able to get a katana and slice up slice up fools in a in a shopping mall. 
Now, obviously, I'm not someone who is looking to to uh, to enjoy committing murder in real life. Don't worry. But I do know some people who are, and that kind of freaks me out. Um, but yes, <laughs> that to one side. Uh, at its best, that's what this game is. It is fun. Ah, come on, get off me. And it is um, creative, uh, and I love it. I, I was very. Uh, very intrigued when I saw that there was a release of, uh, I think of this game on the Wii um, under, oh what was it um, uh, Chop Till You Drop I think it was uh, my brother apparently picked it up and he said it was okay actually, uh, I don't think he I think don't think he had played the Xbox 360 version, but he said it was enjoyable and it sounds like it had most of the features of uh, of this release although obviously probably not as many bodies on the screen Oh, I've lost my katana. That's the other bad thing as well, is that weapons do break. But I suppose that's realistic, you know, realism. Um, as if you want realism in a game like this. Right, and can we... Yes, there we go. Go away, Otis. Stop calling me. Uh, there's another psycho on the ride there. I don't necessarily want to fight him. But I do want to explore a little bit. Uh, go away, go away! Are there any, any clothes in here? There's a hanger. Uh, hanger. Hanger. Come on. Change clothes, okay. Yeah. Oh, cool! Mustard suit. Okay. Plus Mega Man hat. What do you want, Otis? You're in Wonderland Plaza. Go away, I don't care. Uh, Go away, go away. Right. There we go. Um, yeah, and as I say, I think that's one of the reasons why, actually, I, when I first put this game back in a couple of days ago, um, I realised that I hadn't actually, I hadn't actually played, or certainly hadn't actually saved anything uh, in terms of a gameplay file for, uh, for five years. So since 2011, I hadn't started a new file and and saved some some um, progress. And I think the reason for that is because of Otis calling me all the time, as he is again. There, you see the phone's back again, uh, and because of this, the, these um, deadlines in terms of uh, you know, story progression and and uh, side quests. So it can get frustrating. Oh, I lost my Mega Man helmet. Oh, well, I just won't. I just won't save this. 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 Ah! <laughs> just won't save this bit. I think he's. Think he's got highlights in his hair. I think. Okay, and oh, I've accidentally gone into the mission where I'm meant to be going in terms of the story mission. Let's see. So Brad is trying to hunt down who he thinks might be responsible for the outbreak. Let's just see what happens. I love that you keep the clothes in the cutscenes. That's quite cool. Here's our key, key mystery man. Which girlfriend? <laughs> Which one of them? <laughs> okay, we'll have to talk about this later. You know how to use that gun? I've never fired at a person. All right, I'll cover you from here. You need to stick to the shadows. Try to get close to the target, okay? And what am I supposed to do when I get close? Well, the best solution would be to shoot the guy. Obviously the acting as it is, the voice acting isn't particularly great, slightly cheesy, but that works for the genre. Uh, and the animation in terms of the uh, the faces isn't bad. Yeah, the best, but this is an early early Xbox 360s title. Next time you reload, I'll lay down a suppressing fire. I'm counting on you. Make your way over there. One Two, three. 
and let's leave it there shall we. Uh, you'll notice that um, there are lots of load screens in between uh, from place to place in this game and also between the cutscenes. Sometimes between like uh, from you go into a corridor there's a load screen, you come out of the corridor there's a load screen. That can be a bit frustrating but again it's because this is an early Xbox 360 title. Uh, we're about to have a face off with uh, with one of the, uh, with that character. Uh, I'm not sure I'm in the mood for that. But what I was in the mood for was for having fun and killing zombies in Dead Rising. And as I say, in many ways, that's kind of what I love this game for. Um, if you haven't tried it, you should. It's lots. It's lots of fun. It's also lots of fun being, as I say, being creative, exploring them all, finding new and inventive ways to 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 to. to <laughs> <laughs> to, uh, to to massacre the undead and also as well actually finding new costumes you can also actually do things like combining foods different types of foods to get health uh, upgrades you can uh, carry different types of magazines and books with you that give you for example maybe a running boost or a fighting boost or a jumping boost this kind of thing um, so there is a bit of gameplay depth to the game as well uh, not just a sort of like a sandbox depth but also actually a, I suppose a strategic power up depth as well so that's something to bear in mind too anyway guys hopefully this has been fun as ever until next time do take care bye bye